So now we're gonna look at cyclic AMP mechanism. So this is a secondary messenger, right? So if you remember before with the hormones, certain water soluble molecules cannot bypass down the cell membrane, right? So the majority of the receptors are presented on the cell surface, right? And that cell surface is usually the, the primary messenger, right? So the first messenger that's presented. That triggers a cascade downstream in order to create a secondary response to create some kind of activation. Right. So the way it works is via first the actual binding of the molecule, right? So some kind of water soluble molecule or some kind of hydrophilic molecule. So let's look at epinephrine, perfect example, right? So epinephrine is a catecholamine. It is a uh, amino acid derived, so it's a derived from, from tyrosine. And so this comes in, binds to this blue, which is the receptor. It's called the G-cupo uh, protein receptor. This receptor is bound to this little block here is called the G protein. The G protein is responsible for the actual exchange of the GTP and GDP. So guanine triphosphate and guanine diphosphate, right? When the guanine diphosphate is present, so GDP, it is inactive and it's bound to this receptor. However, whenever this receptor becomes bound to this molecule, right? So this epinephrine comes in here and binds, there is an exchange that takes place, right? So the GDP leaves and the GTP comes in. Now it becomes active. So the GTP is now bound to this molecule, right? So this binding of this GTP leads for this detachment to take place, right? So now this G protein has a GTP bound to it. This GTP assists in the binding of GTP, this G protein, to this next structure here called adenosyclase, right? So adenosyclase's main function, when it becomes active, it converts ATP into cyclic AMP. So ATP now comes in because this, this G protein has activated the adenosyclase. ATP comes in and converts ATP to cyclic AMP. And cyclic AMP's main role is for the activation of this downstream molecule here called protein kinase A. So protein kinase A is usually is inactive. Its main function is a lot of functions, right? So enzymatic activity, certain kind of gene activations, what else? Stimulates certain cellular secretions, right? So when it becomes active, you have all these physiological changes that happen, right? So as I mentioned before, you have enzymatic activity. So enzymes begin to work. You have certain protein secretions. So there's certain secretions of proteins, right? And this is due to activation of translation, transcription, and translation becomes active. What else? Um, also, channels can be opened. So we can say channel opening, right? Certain sodium channels, certain potassium channels can open, right? Triggering a change in gradient of the, of the, of the potential here, right? So this process is called the cyclic AMP secondary messenger mechanism. So secondary me uh, messenger, messenger. Remember, this is all a secondary response. So the primary response, primary messenger, is this epinephrine molecule that we talked about here from the beginning, right? But now it creates this downward cascade of, of, of phenomena known as the cyclic AMP uh, secondary messenger. Right, and this is just a very short version of it.